That seemed a little too easy. This episode was made possible by generous supporters on Patreon. Hey crazies, when you first learn about black holes, it seems like they're pretty easy to make. You just put at least three times the mass of the sun in a small enough space, and bam, you've got yourself a black hole. But there are some hidden obstacles in this process. Obstacle one, you're probably underestimating how small this has to be. It's a lot smaller than most people think. I mean, this is three suns. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. This is a black hole with three suns inside it. That is some serious compression. No wonder it takes three suns worth of gravity. The space occupied by a non-rotating black hole is given by something called the Schwarzschild radius. Schwarzschild, sw whatever. Given a certain amount of mass, this is how small you need to compress it to turn it into a black hole. Even rotating black holes have a size that's about the same. And that's just the event horizon, a boundary we can't see beyond. We really have no idea how small the actual stuff inside it has gotten. General relativity says it collapses to infinite density into something called a physical singularity. Which brings us to our next issue. Obstacle two, classical mechanics does not apply to black holes. That means we have to be careful about what we mean by mass. Mass can get confusing real fast. Fast, fast. Gravity is the curvature of space time and that's caused by energy. It's better to talk about energy. So when we say we need at least three times the mass of the sun, we're really saying we need at least three times the energy of the sun. It doesn't have to be matter energy. It could just as easily be light energy. The same rule applies. Yes, pure light can theoretically form a black hole. It's just not easy getting that much light in a small enough space. It's a lot easier to do that with matter energy. Obstacle three, for a black hole to exist, it must exist in all frames of reference. In relativity, people can disagree on how far apart events are, how much time passes between them, or even what order they happen in. But everyone agrees on whether or not an event occurred. If an event horizon forms, then everyone will observe that it formed, including someone at rest with respect to the black hole. So no, you can't just move a rock really fast and make a black hole. That's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. Black holes are made by compressing neutron stars, which are mostly big balls of neutrons. The kinetic energy of individual neutrons can count toward the energy needed to make a black hole, but not the kinetic energy of the whole neutron star through space. Which brings us to our final issue. Obstacle four, black holes are made from compressed neutrons and neutrons are quantum particles. So here's the situation. You mean like that guy from the Jersey Shore? What? If black holes come from neutron stars, and you can't understand neutron stars without quantum mechanics, then you can't understand black holes without quantum mechanics. We learned something very important in this video. Quantum particles are never objects. They are always waves. Specifically, quantum probability waves. Which means we need two things. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle, and the Pauli exclusion principle. Explosion? Ex ex exclusion. We'll start with the second one. The Pauli exclusion principle states that fermions, like electrons, protons, and neutrons, must occupy a unique quantum state. In other words, you can't have more than one in the same state. If they have the same energy, then they must have different momenta or spin orientations or something. This is important because it's what keeps normal neutron stars from collapsing. Once all the neutrons settle down and find the lowest state they can, that's it. Any closer, and some of the neutrons would have to occupy the same state which the Pauli exclusion principle says they can't do. But this doesn't explain everything we observe. We've noticed that the more mass a neutron star has, the smaller it is. Which might leave you wondering, how can they shrink like that if they've reached their lowest state? Shouldn't they get bigger? Questions to which there is only one possible answer. Neutron stars do expand, just not in space. This is where we need the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. These quantities here are standard deviations. They give us an idea of the spread of possible values. If your wave is highly localized, the standard deviation is small. If there's a wide range of possible values, the standard deviation is large. This one here is for position, and this one is for momentum. If you want to narrow down where a particle might appear, then you have to accept a wider range of possible motions. Hmm, how can we visualize this? It's time for crazy talk. Let's imagine for a moment that any continuous property of a quantum particle can be treated like a space axis. We're used to the word space implying some kind of position, but it doesn't have to. 
so we'll be more specific and call it position space. So far, so good. Now let's imagine there's something called momentum space, which is momentum mapped onto an axis. We can even graph them together like this. As the position wave shrinks, the momentum wave expands, and vice versa. The more definite one becomes, the less definite the other becomes. The same kind of thing happens to neutrons in a neutron star. It's a little more complicated because there are three position space axes and three momentum space axes to consider. But the basic principle is the same. As the neutrons in a neutron star get closer and closer together, they have to occupy higher and higher momentum states. Neutron stars expand in momentum space. This allows the star to shrink in position space until the black hole forms. Now that's wicked. So how hard is it to make a black hole? Like, really hard. First, you have to get that matter or light into a small enough space, which takes at least three suns worth of gravity in neutrons. Then that gravity has to expand the star in momentum space so it can compress it in position space enough to make a black hole. Wow, it's amazing these things even form in the first place. So, got any questions about black holes? Please ask in the comments. Thanks for liking and sharing this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to keep up with us. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy. Just to clarify, matter is never converted to energy, but it can be converted to light. Both matter and light are real things that have energy. The energy's just changed from one type to another. Anyway, thanks for watching.